Welcome to today's lesson on analyzing graphs and piecewise functions. Let's begin with number three. Graph y equaling x squared for x greater than or equal to zero. This inequality is really the new part of this section. In other words, we're probably going to have to erase part of our graph based on that inequality. Let me graph y equaling x squared using a few points that we know will be on this line. This is our parabola. And it will be something of a U shape, not a V shape, but a U shape. Now, it says graph this where x is greater than or equal to zero. At the origin, the x value is zero. So greater than zero, just as the direction of the arrow in the inequality, would be to keep all values to the right of that point. Our graph, therefore, needs to be erased such that the left half is not included where the x values would be negative. Only the right half where x is greater than or equal to zero would be included in this graph. Let's look at number four. The inequality in number four states that x must fall between the values of one and four. This is a straight line <clears throat> going through some points and in these points, we want to be sure we include the x value of 1 and the x value of 4, since these are the values in the inequality. So you may want to make up some values around these just in order to get enough points to graph your line. Now if I plot these points, I should get my straight line. Four negative seven is off my graph. Let me go ahead now and try to draw a line through these points. There we go. Now our focus is going to be on the x value of one and the x value of four. The x value of one is this point, one negative one. The x value of 4 is actually off the graph at 4, negative 7, which I guess I should put on here. There it is. The graph needs to exist between the x value of 1 and the x value of 4, or between these two points that we created in our table. Therefore, any points outside or any graph outside of those two points would not be included in this graph based on that inequality. So in other words, our graph exists strictly between the point 1, negative 1 and the point 4, negative 7. My line is not very straight. It's not very easy to graph this, freehanding it. On this tablet. In the inequality, when you look at x compared to 1, you see only a less than symbol, not a less than or equal to. So this needs to be an open circle at that point 1, negative 1. At the point 4, negative 7, it says less than or equal to. So that point is filled. And there is your graph. In topic 2, it talks about finding the opposite of a polynomial. Well, the opposite means to make it negative. So looking at number 8, it is asking, are these two expressions opposite of each other? In other words, if I took the first expression, which is a trinomial, and multiplied everything times negative 1, it would be 2x squared minus 5x minus 10. So is this second expression the opposite of the first expression? 
And the answer is no because of the difference in the sign on the 10. So they are not opposites of each other. On our next page, they ask us to evaluate f of negative x. Well, they've already shown it to us by replacing really every x in the equation with a negative x, noting in number 11 the negative x inside the absolute value. When you take the absolute value of something, if it's a variable, the variable has to stay. But if there is a number, you can remove it. So this is really the absolute value of negative 1x, and I can take the absolute value of the negative 1 and bring it out of the absolute value symbol, which would be a positive 1 outside of the absolute value of x. So a positive 1 in front of the absolute value of x. Therefore, 4 times absolute value of negative x is just 4 times the absolute value of x because you take the absolute value of the negative 1. Let's look at number 12. Again, you can see negative x has been substituted into this function. And in the first one, you have negative x cubed, which is really a negative 1x being cubed. Well, negative 1 cubed remains negative 1, and of course x cubed is x cubed. So this becomes negative 2 times a negative 1 x cubed, and then 4 times negative x is negative 4x. The end result is that you have a negative 2x cubed minus 4x. As we move into the connection to college algebra, it says determine if this given function h of x is even, odd, or neither. In order to do this, we need three function values. We need h of x, which is given. We need h of negative x, which we need to compute. And we also need negative h of x, which we need to compute h of negative x would equal negative 4 times a negative x cubed plus 2 times negative x. When we simplify this, remember negative x cubed is negative still, and that negative times negative 4 will make it a positive 4x cubed. Negative h of x is the opposite of h of x, which means to multiply everything in h of x times negative 1. Often you can just do this in your head rather quickly, but this result will be a positive 4x cubed minus 2x. To determine if something is even, odd, or neither depends on which of these functions are equal to each other. If h of x equals h of negative x, then your function is considered an even function. If your negative h of x equals h of negative x, then your function is considered an odd function. So remember, our h of x was given to be 4x cubed plus 2x. When I compare h of x to h of negative x, I note that they are not equal to each other Therefore, this is not even. When I compare h of negative x to negative h of x, those results are the same. They are equal. Therefore, this function is an odd function. Let's look at number two. It says graph this function, which is a piecewise function because it is defined in pieces. One piece is the top line in which y would equal 1 half x minus 1. The second function would be the bottom line in which y would equal negative x minus 1. You notice the given inequalities are based around the x value of negative 2, meaning you're going to erase your graph around the x value of negative 2. If I graph the 1 half x minus 1, I need to be sure to include x equaling negative 2 because I will erase around that value. So maybe I will put a negative 4 in and a 0 in to come up with these points. 
when I graph these three points, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, and 0, negative 1, I will get my straight line. as straight as I can make it on this computer. Now, in that top line, that top equation, we can only have where x is less than or equal to that negative 2. So at that point, negative 2, 2, I only keep the left side. Less than is to the left. I only keep the left side of that point, negative 2, negative 2, and I erase the right side. I made a filled hole there, or a filled circle, because of the equality part of the less than or equal to symbol. The y equaling a negative x minus 1 also needs to have the point negative 2 in its graph. Let me write how this is evaluated. I'm going to have a negative of a negative 4 minus 1, which is a positive 4 minus 1, which would be 3. A negative 2 would have a match of a positive 1, and 0 would match to negative 1. So negative 4, positive 3 is a point on this second line. Negative 2, positive 1, and 0, negative 1. The important point is the negative 2, 1, because I will either erase to the left or the right of that point. This should be a straight line. Now, the inequality states that I want greater than negative 2. The arrow is pointing to the right, so I'm going to keep the graph to the right side of that point, negative 2, 1 and erase the left side. Now, since this point, negative 2, 1, is on the bottom line, I must be careful because it's a greater than negative 2, not greater than or equal to. In other words, this point, negative 2, positive 1, has to be drawn as an open circle. I rather overemphasized it there. But that is a representation of what that graph should look like. This is your piecewise graph defined in two pieces, having an open circle at the point negative 2, 1, and having a filled circle at the point negative 2, negative 2. I hope this recording was useful to you, and thank you for being patient and following me through to the end.